שלום, שמי דן חיוטין, אני חוקר קולנוע, והזמינו אותי היום לשוחח עם לאנס אופנהיים, שנמצא כאן בצד השני של הזום, לדבר על הסרט שלו שראיתם, סוג של גן עדן. אז ברשותכם אני אעבור לאנגלית. So, the, now comes the English part. So, Lance, <laughs> how, how are things back there in uh, Florida? Are you in Florida now? I am in Florida. Um, okay. I'm, I'm so sad I can't uh, <laughs> be with you all. I mean, I, I guess, you know, I wish we all were in anywhere else, but, uh, you know, trapped inside the four walls of our house, if we're lucky enough to have that. Um, but I, I love Israel. I, 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 love, I miss it deeply. And uh, I'm, we I, miss your I, corporeal I, presence. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hopefully so, one day I'll be back. Yes, we hope so too. And to another Haifa Film Festival, this time yes. in real in form. Um, uh, so I'll ask you the question. I'll start off with the question that everyone asks uh, at this uh, point of, uh, of a sort of Q&A. So how did you get to, to this project? Um, how did you... wind up doing a film about a retirement community in, in Florida, though maybe Florida is the place to, to talk about those things. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I, I, I grew up around so many retirement communities that it, like, yeah. I guess that, that, that sort of, um, it never appeared to me as such a, a foreign thing to make a film about. It almost, in some ways, it was kind of like diving deeper into, maybe some yeah i guess you know the way the way the villages is landscaped the way it's i guess planned as like an urban as a city um mm -hmm. its developers and the people who were manicuring the place were the same folks the same company manicured the place that i grew up in so in some ways like the the, the sights and sounds and, and and things that were going on there um the scale of it, I think, was really the thing that really fascinated me in a lot of ways. Um, I, you know, I, I left Florida, I was going to college in Boston, mm -hmm. and um, I had been, I just kind of became really fascinated that hundreds of thousands of, of people from all across the U.S. were sort of seeding and leaving the, their lives wherever they were coming from. <laughs> My, yeah, migrating, not just to Florida, but, but, but into this sort of picture-perfect you know, palm fringe bubble that kind of reminded them of uh, maybe better days or, or days that never existed, but some kind of <laughs> idealist sort of utopian promise of a community that lured everyone in. And that was sort of the, the, the initial interest for me just to go there. I didn't know anyone there. I, I literally, mm -hmm. I was scouting for characters on Airbnb and I moved into the most interesting Airbnb I could find. Mm -hmm. um, I was living with these retired rodeo clowns who um, <laughs> who showed me their whole world. And, and, and you know, I, as soon as I got there, I just was kind of, you know, immediately convinced that th there was sort of something going on. You know, it was almost like documentary heaven in a lot of ways, just because you were constantly dealing with um, a place that just felt so... like, I guess, unreal, you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, and, and that for me was, you know, sort of the, where this film ca came from was that you're dealing with this Truman Show like setting in real life. Um, yeah. And I was just really fascinated in the most simple of ways. What is it actually like to exist there? What is it like mm -hmm. to not fit in to the, the utopian, you know, kind of prepackaged optimism of a place? And mm -hmm. what does that also look like in your last few decades of living and why, you know, how do all those things manifest? Together, um, yeah, well, <laughs> those are really yeah. things that um, are intriguing to me also when I watch the films, but, be, the film, but before we get to that, there, you said it's a documentary heaven, um, uh, and I would imagine that there was uh, an abundance of characters you could have focused on, including the yeah. rodeo, ex-rodeo clowns <laughs> who didn't make the cut, Um, uh, and I was wondering how you ended up focusing on these, say, four main characters, ultimately. Well, no, I, I, you're totally right. I mean, we, we, we must have filmed with like, man, 30, 30 or so people, maybe more even, mm -hmm. over the course of like the two and a half years of, of filming. Um, but, you know, honestly, I think it, it came down to a few things, right? I think for one, 
um, the film's thesis, I, I arrived at it only like a year into filming and the, and the thesis being like, this is going to be a film that is examining uh, the very real things that still exist at that mm -hmm. point in your life. But you know, the thing that makes it unique and the reason why the film uh, hopefully would attract someone to watch it is you're, you're watching sort of people deal with very real problems in a very hyper real uh, place. And the four folks that are in the film, in my mind, were dealing with things that I myself was really curious about. You know, in a lot of ways, I think it comes to comes to end up becoming a film almost about relationships. Yeah. You know, how to how to maintain one and exist in one, how to find one after you've lost your life partner, and then how I guess do you kind of make amends with this maybe like long <laughs> bigger fantasy of finding the dream person. Yeah. Um, and I guess there's something, you know, to me that each of these stories, each of these four subjects brought to the film and, 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 and I thought was very beautiful in a way was this um, kind of, you know, seeing all of these folks, some, some of these characters, some of these subjects are like navigating their eighth decade of being on this planet. And mm -hmm. their, their, their shit is just so not figured out. They're so still open. just as much of a <laughs> hot mess as, as I am as a 24 year old. So yeah. I think, you know, I found that to be really like terrifying, but I also th found that to be really inspiring in a lot of ways as well. Um, yeah. That, you know, it's okay if you don't have your, <laughs> it's okay if your life isn't figured out towards the end. <laughs> that's just sort of, <laughs> yeah, that's just sort of what happens, you know? Yeah, and, I've, and uh, they're all in a sense, um, outsiders um, yeah. and they're outside of this uh, community but inside it in, in various ways and it kind of um, forces us to, to think about idiosyncrasies and uh, mm -hmm. what's idiosyncratic to us. Um, I was thinking about, I was just watching your film and, and thinking about Errol Morris's uh, Vernon, Florida and I was trying to think, is Florida the place where, where all <laughs> idiosyncrasies take place? What is it about the special Florida air that, that is, are there other places like this across the US? I don't know, it seems like it only needs to be in Florida and nowhere else. I mean, yeah, Florida's got a very specific strain of, of, of I don't know, some, I mean, you know, there's, there's like, there's so many different, I feel like disparate parts of Florida, but it brings such a unique mm -hmm. strain of American thinking to it. You know, in some ways yeah. I feel like it's like the product of just sitting out in the sun for so long and, you know, <laughs> living in some kind of escapist dream that mm -hmm. makes your, that, that, you know, turns your skin into like leather <laughs> and then, yeah, like it melts your brain into like a rep, reptilian brain or something, <laughs> you know. But, but I think, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. Most of the people who live in the villages are not from Florida. And I think that yeah. was another kind of thing that I found really fascinating is that it, it, there's just, you know, there is this escapist promise of this place that draws people there. And I think as a filmmaker, I'm always trying to, I'm always trying to kind of understand the mainstream of a, of a community or a place by looking at the ex, the, the by looking at the e extremes or like the extremities of, of of those types of places. So that's that's also a reason that I think you know the film focuses on these four people. Um, they may not be you know the sort of like uh, marketing material. Come and move to the villages where you know you're going to find these four people everywhere. But I think the feelings and the emotions and the things that they're going through are things that everyone not just in the villages, but I think everywhere really experiences. And seeing that happen in, 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 in such a kind of uh, like otherworldly place is, <laughs> is what made me so excited about making this film. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and sort of, so I wanna tie a little, tie some of these strands together, cause I was, uh, you know, it was a, it's a very complex film, even though it sort of shows uh, the simple side of life and the, the beauty of indulging in, in retirement and whatever simplicity comes with that. Of course, you say that's exactly when we see the scenes kind of break open at, at points. Um, but there are, there are these um, main contrasts within the film, main tensions that I noticed that I want to not just like follow each character, but talk to you a little bit about the themes that you're trying to discuss as far as I can understand them. Um, and uh, one tension that really struck me from the very beginning, from the very first shot, 
is, is the tension between the sense of collectivity within this community. The, 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 the almost, it reminds me of like Esther Williams film, the synchronized swimmers. Everybody's doing everything in sync together. Um, and there is a great, um, I don't know if it's joy or just a mere just holding on to, to strength in numbers. Um, but then there are these individuals and especially, I forget the name of the man and the couple. Uh, mm, Reggie. Reggie. And, yeah. you know, I, I, of course he goes off on a tangent and becomes this really uh, radical individualist. But, but even at the beginning of it, when we don't see the, 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 the measure of it at first, it, he seems to be only individual by the sheer fact that it doesn't play along with the collective. So I'm wondering how that, what do you feel about how that tension manifests in the film? Well, I, I, it's a it's a really great observation. Thank you for thank you for making it. I mean, yeah, I think I think that's something that it not only just exists you know exists in the film, but it also I think you know it exists in 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 just the fabric of the textures of everyday life there. I think you know, I think it's relatively in, in some ways sort of obvious that if you're joining a, a club and it forces you to kind of get out of bed and you're gonna have your, you know, your friends to be around and you're gonna see them every single day of your life or every Wednesday or every whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's in some ways it's it's a way to, to kind of stave, you know, off, off the loneliness and some of the things that I feel like can, you know, just plague a place like that, plague, you know, the, the subjects in this film, for example. Mm -hmm. But I also think there's something that happens as well as, you know, when you start to join these clubs and you start to sort of find, you know, you're able to kind of just escape into into these these sorts of like these reveries of joy and 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 you know, kind of not having to think about things that are really uh disturbing from every day mm -hmm. the everyday yeah. li life that you lead um you end up also kind of sublimating and you become sort of part of a pact where you you know you be, you, you have you join into some sort of hive mind and i think that was <laughs> with with reggie specifically something i was always really fascinated by because not only was this someone who was recognizing sort of the artificial construction of a place like this and how why it worked for the reasons mm -hmm. it did um but he also, you know, kind of defiantly was standing in his own on in, on his own two feet in his own very unique sort of way, uh, <laughs> it, trying to explore something that was just uh, that I hadn't found anywhere else there. And I think, oh. I think if you're trying to do exactly what he was doing, and I think this is sort of also what happens in the film, um, he loses himself. He tries to compensate, I think, for the the lack of company he has and the lack of uh yeah the lack of spectatorship and he just plunges himself into this into his own sort of escapist dream um yeah. and i and i think a lot a lot of ways like when i think of the villages and i think of the the even in florida more generally in places like the villages mm -hmm. um they, you know, a lot of the folks who exist there are kind of like, they're kind of like uh philip roth characters in some ways <laughs> they're, they're not they're they're sort of um you know they're they're characters who are just willing to risk everything to 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 find a dream of some Someday, kind or to yeah. exist in one. <laughs> yeah. um, so like I, the Augie marches of Florida. It, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like any of these characters from like the Counter Life, you know, mm -hmm. would I feel like would exist very. They would. They, I feel like if they were to retire, they would move to the villages or a place like that. Um, <laughs> I think I mean, what's interesting with Reggie is that he's not a your typical loner. He's not the person who would would choose to live alone. He wants a certain type of of intimacy and companionship, but there sure. seems to be the rule where 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 companionship must be allowing everyone in. Like the very frightening scene where that particular club where everybody has their own name <laughs> the same Lanes, name yeah. like, like, yeah. like children of the corn so you're kind of <laughs> freaking out a little bit it's, it, but it does say something about subsuming your your individual identity with a certain you know one of us one of us kind of collective totally. identity <laughs> totally and I, I think i think like i think reggie's i think what he's going through that was the reason why i was also just so mm -hmm. you know I, I obviously 
you know, he puts, I think, the strains on on what Anne has to go through their marriage. She's sort of a part of that kind of world yeah. where, you know, mm-hmm. she may not be um, an Elaine. Or she, may not be, she may not be fully. But... <laughs> right. But she, she's someone who, who I think, you know, she likes pickleball and she likes doing the things that I think, mm-hmm. you know, that aren't so, you know, out there. A lot of people do that. A lot of that have, have a lot of the same interests that Anne has. So, yeah. I was so interested. You have two very different people existing in one relationship. They've been married for, you know, four decades. Um, and yeah, like, what does it, what, what does that also like, what, you know, how, when you're at that point in a relationship with someone, what do you mean to each other and how, and, and how do yeah. your meanings of each other or your understandings of each other shift, especially when you're in a place that is somewhat reminiscent of like college or going out and finding your new flock of friends and everything like that um but I think you're totally right I mean I think like you know when I first got there I was totally uh in some ways freaked out by the place I was I felt like you know I was for for good reason like the place wasn't designed for a person like me (laughs) like I was the youngest person that I would come (laughs) encounter you know for like miles basically Mm -hmm. um but what I grew to understand about spending so much time there was that, you know, and, and I think you can almost see it in the film too. You know, the film starts off and you, there's a lot, you kind of, you feel the distance from the camera yeah. to these sub, to these clubs and there's these big wide shots and these big yeah. kind of pan from you know, the back of the head. And yeah, clean. exactly. Th- those yeah. kinds of things. And then as the film sort of progresses and as I, you know, my crew and I spent more time there and we got to know people and we became mm-hmm. like family with our subjects there's yeah. a level of identification that also happens. Um, and I think that was really important for uh, Dan Garber, the, who I edited the film with, you know, and I had to kind of reflect in the edit, the experience of what it's sure. truly, what it's like to be there, what it's like to feel all of the things that we were feeling when we were making the film. Yeah, yeah, and sort of be part of it. And I think the, the question of freedom comes up and comes up in various ways in that. And uh, mm. not only in the van, <laughs> but also yeah yeah uh, which is kind of like the the proclamation of freedom can i even be but there within that community but even that small scene uh with the guard at the entrance i guess but it's uh, i wouldn't one wouldn't be defining it as an entrance because there's this whole uh, manifesto about how this is not a gated community but in in a sense it's gated if you're not don't belong you get <laughs> you get a little note on your on your on your dashboard saying get out of here i know you're not part of this place so i feel like that that question of of uh how free how open that community is um is is interesting because it leads to a lot of question whether do i assimilate entirely become part of the synchronized swimmers do I separate myself? I go stir crazy and I get on my van and drive off? Or is there a way in between, like with Reggie and Anne, uh, trying mm. to find a way to, to modulate a little separateness, as you say, but a little togetherness? A little... Right, 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 right. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think, you're, I think you're, you're, you're framing it perfectly. I mean, I, I, I think what Dennis talks about at the end of the film where he's, he's, I think yeah. he, he says com- comfort or freedom, you can't have it both <laughs> ways, right? Like, yeah. I think in some ways that's also sort of a, you know, a, a kind of a, a beautiful way to think about the way in which people choose to live in the villages in the first place, you know, and, and, and the kinds of lives you can lead. I think it's like it, it becomes a lot more comfortable to become part of the flock mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and do away with all the worries of, of, of the world. Um, yeah. But also there's a world in which you are, you know, you're kind of, you're shackling yourself to a, a, a kind of a, a life of pe- pleasantries. I think in <laughs> Reggie's case, like, you know, I think in, in Reggie and Anne's relationship, I think ultimately the relationship proves more important than, uh, mm. than, than, than kind of yeah. finding these cosmic truths that can like put, put an end to everyone, you know, <laughs> that, that could literally end with him actually, like, I think he, he's, he's so much, he's kind of on this vision quest to find yeah. what freedom really means spiritually, mm-hmm. that it yeah. actually lands him inside of like, it actually takes away his freedom, it lands him in yeah. jail cell. Fair so, um, so I don't know, there, there, you know, there is, there's, there is something, you know, and, and I think also what Barbara is searching for is, is, mm-hmm. is in a lot of ways, you know, how, how can I exist as a person on my own two feet? How can I be happy? I think there's another level of freedom that also comes into that as well. Like she, she yeah. moved to the villages, not on her own volition. She moved yeah. with her, with her, with her husband, and her late husband. There. 
<laughs> she's stuck there. So, I, you know, I think every person in the film is going through a variation of of the those sort of questions. And I think yeah, even the, the title of the film is, you know, some kind of heaven. It's like you can read into the title as a very optimistic and hopeful and, and mm -hmm. kind of like, wow, you know, a, a kind of exclamatory uh, sort of a compliment to the villages. And you could also read into it as, as, as something that more ironically, I guess, calls into question the ways in which people live there. And, yeah. uh, you know, what the, 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 yeah, like, uh, is it really some kind of heaven is another way of looking at it. Which um, the final shot really gives you yeah. a sense of that tension and, uh, and leaves it unresolved in a way. In, in a way, it's a tragic or almost ironic shot, but in a way, it's very, it opens up possibilities because there is totally. that interaction between the one and the collective. But I want to piggyback on the some kind of heaven because the other tension, the tension that you kind of spoke about in terms of your theme, uh, is that tension between an authenticity and the fantasy, uh, mm -hmm. a, a heaven of sorts. Um, yeah. you, 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 you emphasize uh, this sort of uh, uh, idea of this place as recreating some sort of past that maybe happened, maybe didn't happen, maybe we want to happen, want to have happened. Um, but then again, it's it's all it's all simulacra. It's all it's all uh, you know. It's Truman Show. It's uh, in many ways it's a fantasy. But I mean, I think, um, and this was a pivotal theme for me uh, because it allowed me to see that maybe this contrast is not so much contrast. Uh, the acting studio slash class um, and this this which brought about, in my mind, a very, uh, or emphasize a, a very much an authentic desire to be something else. Not, mm. not so much yeah, a falsity, yeah, yeah. not so much some sort of trickery of the mind or just partaking in, in the Kool-Aid, but, but really a sort of really authentic desire to dream. So yeah, I was wondering yeah, yeah. if you want to talk a little bit about the scene, but a lot about the theme in general. Well, no, I, I think I think you you you. I, well, thank you. I mean, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful way to think of it. I I, I and I I think, you know, I I think it's it's the easiest thing I think, and that that one could have you know a, a movie to be made about a place like the villages is to just make the simple sort of this place isn't all what it's cracked <laughs> up to be, and like you know I think I think. Um, or you can make the expose on this on, on the place and i think both yeah. of those i'm sure can exist and they would be very different films than than, than the one than this one um and i think precisely for the very reason that you're you're bringing up i mean to me i think there's something extremely um interesting it's and maybe it's less it's not even i don't even see it as much of a binary it's not like yeah. and it almost kind of applies to what we were just were talking about like yeah. you know you can kind of exist in both worlds um, but how much of yourself, you know, the more you belong to the world, how much of yourself are you giving up? And and and, and yeah. I think I think um, even in the way we're sort of shooting the film, right? You like mm -hmm. the film in a lot of ways is 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 attempting what we attempted to do is kind of to mirror the construction of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're shooting with one camera, it's one tripod. The camera is like right up in you know, <laughs> to our, our subject spaces, and in a lot oh, of yeah. ways you know, it's, it's a documentary, no one's, we're not like making up situations or scenarios, mm -hmm. but people mm -hmm. are sort of, re, they're kind of performing in a way, they're performing scenes from yeah. their everyday lives. And, yeah. you know, we would do like, it, it, like for Barbara, for example, she, you know, aspires to be an actress. So working yeah. with her was almost like working with an actress where I would be like, Barbara, like, can you, can you re-say that thing again? Or can you, <laughs> You know, like, a here's a scenario. <laughs> yeah, like, pretend like we're not here, which is always such a funny thing because yeah. you have a camera in some front of someone's face. But, you know, like, like, can you do the things you would normally do without us being here, but we're going to shoot it like we would a, we would a, a fiction film. Mm -hmm. And I think in a lot of ways that was initially didn't really work. And it felt yeah. like you could feel the artifice, you could feel, feel the performance. But as we kept doing it and as trust was kind of built and forged between our subjects and, our, and, and my crew, um, you know, I think there was something kind of beautiful, both the, the process and making the film kind of mirroring the theme of, of, of the setting and, and the theme of the movie of like finding, I guess, finding authenticity or finding truth through the, the, the constructed or through, through the artifice. And, 
and that, you know, I, I that like I, yeah, you're mentioning like, I don't know, I, I think of like, um, you know, I, I studied anthropology in college, and I, mm-hmm. I think of a lot of the, the the texts I used to read, and you know, tri- travels and hyper reality, this kind of like of course, ethnography yeah. of of, yeah. of Baudrillard of, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff, and 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 mm-hmm. you know. I was always just sort of like, what is the most, how can I distill a lot of these ideas and themes and, you know, academic ways of looking at a place into a, you know, purely emotional way. And, you know, I think what you're, what you're mentioning is like every, every subject in this film is attempting to be somebody or to to, to, attempting to grow or or become. And Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, is, that image or the, in my mind like I just I feel like that's something I don't really I haven't really ever seen in, in movies that usually portray you know the elderly yeah. even in my own life in my own relationship with my grandparents who I love dearly um like you know I, I my image of them is you know I, I I see them more as like I guess the elderly the wise sort of the, the, the folks who have kind of lived a long enough of a life to to have experienced like the range of all human emotion and mm-hmm. um these stories proved to me that that, necess- that that wasn't necessarily the case like that that not all of the things that you would experience in your life not all of them are just in the rearview mirror they're they're, they're, yeah. they're still actively happening and 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 life continues to be just as dramatic and uh and 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 painful and hopeful as as it is when you're younger so you know that was something that i I, like i i and it was something you know just also by virtue of the fact that we were making a film and with these folks all the time it was something so powerful to to experience and it made me very you know i i I wonder yeah made me wonder all sorts of questions (laughs) in my own life what will i be like when i'm at that age um but anyway yeah, but I think that especially with Barbara and uh, and I think um, well her for her the I think there's a, in that latter scene where she plays out the monologue and uh, within that same framework of the class you really see her not necessarily trying to to resist the dream that is this community that is the village um, but she does insist on having that range of emotion there also pain not only yeah. pleasure um also regret not only euphoria i mean and i think and i think that that insistence um is not defiant it's just uh, again not this binary it's just an, an attempt through through acting through being someone else to bring bring a little bit of boston maybe but bring a little bit of, <laughs> of who she is what she is rather uh, into this dream and have it be more personalized in a way Mm. or of her um before you know the end <laughs> no i think you're i think you're totally right i think you're i think you're absolutely right and it was and i mean it's funny because you know like the the she chose that monologue i had no idea what she was going to perform there was a moment where she was like i know you guys are making a movie you know do you want me to perform something like i know you know we, do, do you want do you want to give me like a monologue? and i was like ah oh. And I kept, I was, I was sure. thinking about it so long and hard. And I was just like, you know what? Like, you should just do whatever you feel like doing. I, I don't want to, like, I feel like this is actually kind of a big choice for you to, to perform something yeah. in front of this class for the first time in a long time. Yeah. And it's funny, like, that 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 text is from, um, I've never I've never seen the show, but it's from American Horror Story. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I didn't recognize it's just like some, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it, like, it's really it, powerful, it, it, but, uh, it's extremely powerful, and the way she delivers it is I, is like is very different from from how it's delivered in, in in American Horror Story. But I also found that to be so interesting of just sort of like, you know, of 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 uh, I don't know, repurposing uh, this this sort of like pop cultural text that mm-hmm. in, in in the American Horror Story show it's delivered by a nun. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like the context in some ways is like is. I guess, yeah, d- d- taking it away from that context and making it and in, in, in Barbara literally being able to put herself into this character that she plays in that last scene is yeah. like, you know, I, I think everything, you know, both to the movie, but also I think like it just speaks so loudly. And she's an amazing performer. She's she's really just I, like finding a vessel to channel a lot of her own interests, I think, is, yeah. is something that's that she discovers over the course of the film that she doesn't need a person she doesn't need uh mm-hmm. you know 
She doesn't need a relationship necessarily. She doesn't need to replace the man that is no longer in her life yeah. um, to find fulfillment or happiness or mm -hmm. actualize some kind of dream or something. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, the final tension, the, the er tension, um, which is also the one that, that isn't as fleshed out as directly, but is there like a looming shadow, is that question of, yeah, life versus death. I mean, especially the demise, the end. Um, and we're, we're constantly trying to figure out where, 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 where what it's, presence is, what shapes it takes uh, within the village, within the film about this community. There are moments, of course, plan for your death, get, you know, get the discount coffin now rather than, rather than later. Um, uh, but it seems like there, there's something in that film that so resists um, mm -hmm. uh, something about the community that actually, that so resists, that so holds on to life. Last hurrah with the emphasis on hurrah rather than last. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and, no, and you're, it, you're totally right. Yeah, and in a way, you're you're constantly kind of confronting, uh, in subtle ways, uh, confronting this this wealth of light, the light of life, uh, with the shadow of 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 what's to come. Um, and I was wondering uh, how much. How much is, is really death a presence there? I mean, beyond the fact that people just croak, but, but you know, in, in these multitude of activities that seem to just, um, you know, just act as escape from, from one ultimate fact, right? Well, it's, I mean, no, no, I mean, it's a, that, that, that you're, you're completely right. And I think, I mean, in some ways, you know, the, the, the way the villages works, as a marketing vessel and also just as like a, as a city, they don't have like, the, I think the closest place you can get buried, they don't have, is like maybe 10 miles away from there. Like it's, there's no graveyard. In there's sight, no right? death. Yeah, there, so it, in it's, the it's, night. <laughs> certainly there is like logistical questions. And I think like there's a whole industry of, of, of like, you know, providers who, who, who deal with pre-planning and all that kind yeah. of thing. And, 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 and kind of this like late stage capitalist, capitalistic yeah. sort of way where it's like, yeah. you know, if you sign up in the next 10 days, you'll get like a 30% discount on your, <laughs> yeah. you know, on, yeah, on the way yeah. you're buried. You get to choose um, your own music for the ceremony. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, un, unbelievable stuff. But you know, I, and I think honestly, that, 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 that to me, there is something really interesting. And in, I feel like you know another expected thing that I feel like comes from when you watch a film about the elderly or a place like the villages, or you know maybe it's a nursing home instead of a retirement community. But you know, is is the specter of 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 death. And yeah. I think the thing I was kind of fascinated by and I wanted to mirror is I wanted to sort of like I wanted to get into the culture I wanted to inhabit like that song is that all there is or something like I mm -hmm. wanted to show the people dancing I wanted to show all the things that sort of constitute the ways in which we distract ourselves from dying um, yeah. and I think that's sort of what you know the reason in some ways that retirement communities and cruise ships and all of these sorts of like big bright lights are, are distractions from ultimately what we don't want to think about, which is, which is the end. Um, yeah. And I think in seeing people who, who deal with the more, you know, yeah, I, I guess like seeing people whose Truman show boat has kind of hit the wall and, and, they're, yeah. and they're have to sort of rebuild or think of themselves and diff differently than everyone else. I think they're in some ways they're more equipped to handle those kinds of conversations. But again, it's still like, you know, the thing that I just found so interesting and, and it, towards the beginning of the film sort of talks about this, but you know, when you move to the villages, you know, there's not really an emphasis, like the premium is no longer placed on how old you are or what you yeah. did in a previous life. It's like, there's almost, you know, it, the, the, the true design of it is to like really, in some ways hedonistically just celebrate what could be the last 10 years of your life and it, at least the last 10 years of like your young old your 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 sort you're of uh, fully you active know, the life you're yeah the life you're leading before all of your ailments and illnesses and things yeah. that really do remind you that the end is extremely near coming mm -hmm. um 
So, you know, yeah, I, I feel like the, the more you think about a place like the, the villages and, 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 you know, I think even just like every time I've, I've talked about the film or the setting of the film, I'm always, you know, I, I feel like there's a big distinction. There's a difference between a nursing home and assisted living center and like, a, a, you know, basically a cruise ship on earth, which is the villages. So I think like, I think that's another thing that's sort of lurking behind it. I think maybe more directly is just sort of, you know, this is a film about the ways in which we distract ourselves from the end mm -hmm. by kind of celebrating and delighting and all of these things that are going on around yeah. us. Um, yeah, and I yeah. think, uh, and I think the, um, you know, we can, we can probably speak about cinema as a way of a similar distraction. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, in the sense that we are, you know, voyaging into, into some other world and, and believe that we kind of exiting our own timeline but the ambivalence is there because there will be the end at the end of that film. Light will turn into darkness and we'll have to return to the timeline. So it always reminds us in some weird um, paradox that we can escape, but that escape has a limit. And I think the fact that I think your film, and I'm thinking about the end of your film, which I just uh, talked about earlier, um, it kind of leaves it open. So in a mm. way, it ends, but it doesn't end. Um, yeah. So it, it, I think it brings the question of the ending to us, back to us, um, uh, which, you know, in essence is the quest. It's not whether we're going to end, but how we want to live. Um, mm -hmm. So I think um, in a way, uh, not every film is the same film in this respect, as is not every uh, retirement community. Is yeah, the same that's very, retirement that's a great, community. That's a... um, so I think I think you, in a way, this is also a reflection of what what film allows us to do, uh, sometimes for our betterment, sometimes for our detriment. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So thank you for Amen that. Amen to that. No, no. I, 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 that's a beautiful. <laughs> that's a very. That's a very beautiful way of of thinking about. I mean, yeah. You know, all too often, it's like, it, I, it just. I, I I think there's there's power inherent in the idea of 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 an unresolved person or or an unresolved ending. Because I I I, I just. It's not, you know, I guess in some ways, like obviously in some ways the movie functions as a form of escapism, right? If you're watching yeah. it, it's transporting, you know, and the tools behind the scenes that we're constantly doing with the sound design, with the color, with just even the, you know, just from the, from the way we shot the film, mm -hmm. um, it was always designed with the idea of like trying to immerse the audience into you know it's into the villages <laughs> yeah yeah we, i feel like you can't you just can't you can't the, the traditional ways of making a film you know a verite movie or or something you know maybe that's more interview based i just in yeah. my mind did not do justice or, or capture the spirit or the essence of this place and the so, experience of it of course yeah totally so yeah I, I i i think what you're saying is is it's a i couldn't say it better i feel like you should just i want to hire i should hire you to be to be me for the future right I, I, but I, I love i love what you're saying i think it's i think it's um it's a very beautiful sentiment of of, of the yeah, a life that is continuing to be lived is um, and, and evolving. Yeah, I mean you don't, you know. So with that bright sentiment, uh, I was giving a cap off of uh, forty minutes, uh, thirty minutes, but <laughs> the conversation was so was going so well. Then we went to forty. But if you have any final words to our uh, Israeli audiences, this would be the time. Um. Thank you for watching this movie. I hope you enjoy it. No, I, I, uh, I, I, I mean, I think, I think the one thing that I'm constantly thinking about is like, you know, we are in a, a, an insanely terrifying and bizarre world now. And I hope if this movie brings you any joy or comfort or humor, maybe it won't bring you any of those things. Maybe it will bring you existential dread, but I, 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 I hope that, uh, I, I appreciate you watching it. Thank you to the festival for, uh, for, for, for having us. Yeah. Okay. Toda raba le Lance. Toda raba bemet le Kahal. Ani gam mekave shenanet emaseret, la meargenim, ve kamuvan, bonavot atkufa azot kama shiotar bekalut. Zeu.